Hey everybody, DJ Lou here, and this is all about the 2022 speaker shootout. In specific, I wanted to go into some of the details of how to read these charts, some of the other information we put in there, just so you have a better understanding of, you know, why is this here in the first place and all that. So I want to talk first on the chart itself. So, you know, we tested 50, 51 speakers in total in the system. And, you know, we end up doing a fairly standardized measurement on how, you know, everything was captured. You'll see the chart has two different colors, has uh, basically a lime green and a magenta. And the lime green was based off a microphone right dead in front, 10 feet away, right dead down that middle. We also did in magenta a microphone that was either 90 degrees off for your typical point source, you know, your cabinet that would sit on top of a speaker pole or on top of a sub. And then we did 110 degrees off for the typical column array and whatnot. Not every column array can reach that. Most of them can or exceed that. But we wanted to have the 110 degree uh, reading. So this way you would see what it would be off axis because it does get quieter. And this is why in the chart the magenta is way out in front and all that. But it looks a little bit lower than the lime green. The lime green, again, that microphone that's right in front. Thanks to Ben Stowe, he was able to take these calibrated microphones and make these measurements. You'll also see in the center uh, input gains, sub gains, and master gains. So what we tried to do is get to 94 decibels as best as possible. We would do the input almost as high as it would go. Um, if it had no more to give, then we would start cranking up the master. Not every speaker has a master and an individual channel input. Some have individual sub control as well. We try to keep the sub control unadjusted uh, when possible. Not every speaker allowed us to do that. And again, we try to get that information uh, put in there. And you'll see little dial positions for where we had to go to achieve 94 decibels on that. Now you'll see on the right hand side, uh, the technical specifications from the manufacturers. This includes right on the very top line, frequency response and frequency range. And this is to go basically pair off with the charts that you see on the left. Now frequency range, you know, it, it's a value, it's there. It's not necessarily the best thing to reference because they're just basically saying this is the lowest and highest that the speaker is you know, capable of. But it's measured at such a low range. You know, you're not basically adding amplitude, which is what frequency response is all about. So it's not the most fair of all values to go off, but it's something to, to measure. Some manufacturers only does the range, so I wanted to at least get that information in there. Basically what you'll want to see, the frequency response and comparing that to what the chart has. Now, just because it says that maybe it can only go to 40 hertz, you'll still see some frequencies kind of creeping up, but it's usually on the slope and whatnot. And the typical measurement is plus or minus three decibels. You know, once it exceeds that, that's kind of where the extremes that it goes and it kind of falls off. And again, you'll see those slopes and those kind of, you know, just cliffs that you might see, especially on the higher frequencies and whatnot. Again, this doesn't mean that the speaker can't do different frequencies, you know, lower and higher in that range, but a, a consistent repeatable process. And again, we threw pink noise at this. So every speaker was as equally measured as possible. So compare those two, I would say most of the manufacturers were fairly on point for what they actually published, but you're always going to have other things like the room dynamics, you know, where the speaker is placed and certain things, are there chairs in front of you, people in front of you, all these other things are always going to affect what the response of the speaker is capable of doing. This is again why when we did the measurement, they were always at the same exact spots or anything. So anything that the room had to offer, every speaker suffered that same gain or loss from that. So again, trying to be as fair as possible. I did put some additional other information like what the maximum driver size is, so whatever it's woofer or subwoofer was you know, sized at. Maximum SPL, and again, don't read a whole lot into that. Yes, it might be able to say 127, 130, 132 decibels. How often can it do it? How long can it do it? How repeated uh, can it hit those points? Most of the time, not. Uh, I think there was actually only one manufacturer that only produced an RMS uh, value of that, and that means that we'll actually be able to do that more consistently. Um, everybody else just had a peak. You might have different amplifiers for your tweeters, your mids, and your subs, or just one amplifier doing um, you know, everything that's uh, packed in and all that. The next specification that we did was coverage. This is the pattern of you know, what comes out, 90 degrees, 110, 120, so on and so on. Um, you know, again, we have the measurements that came from the, the pink noise test and where the microphone was positioned. We have that information. So some may perform better than others. You'll see that when you see the pink 
fall off a lot more than what you see in the green. That just simply represents that being off axis, it just didn't perform as well as on. And you always suffer some loss being on the sides. Some, especially column arrays, have that wider pattern. So in theory, you should see less of a drop off than say, you know, your typical point source speaker. In addition to all that, we also published its weight, its uh, typical street price, and also a price class. And I tried to get as close to possible what you would typically see for this brand compared to X, Y, and Z, just so they're kind of matched up as close as possible. A column array, almost always is gonna be a little bit more expensive than say, a, or definitely a point source to begin with, but even adding the sub, it still may be a little bit more expensive than all that. And we didn't wanna compare you know, apples and oranges in that regard. So basically the way the price classes work is what you would see in that typical um, you know, piece. So a column array, you're typically starting more in that higher 800s, 900s, going all the way up to say four grand and all that. So we try to divide up by price class as best as possible. It's not gospel. It's something I came up with. Yell at me if somehow I got that wrong. So what does this all mean in the end? So you're gonna see these charts and yes, they're, they might look a little complicated and all that, but you'll start seeing patterns. You know, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of who won, who lost, blah, blah, blah. This is not that kind of test. Sound is subjective. And even just looking at charts, you only get so much. You can shape the sound the way you want by placing an EQ on it and really kind of shaping all that. But what we really wanted to show is out of the box at 94 decibels with a microphone here and a microphone there, what does each one perform apples to apples to apples to apples as close as we can provide. And again, this only goes so far. I highly, highly advise if this is really interesting and all that, get a 2023 ticket you, you can your ears are what's going to you know shape all this and maybe your eyes too you might have a you know, particular look that you're going for but your ears should really dictate things i'm hoping actually for 2023 we do some blind testing too because i'm really interested to see what some people will say on certain brands certain styles and whatnot all this being said i hope this gives you at least a basic primer of how to read these charts you know how to read the tech specs how we actually got to these measurements and just basically clearing the air of how we did this in the first place. But thanks so much for watching this video. Scroll down below to see all the results and whatnot. We'll hopefully have even more speakers in 2023 to test out and all that. It might even be a different room. So hey, you know, the contours of these sounds may change drastically. Only time will tell. Thank you again so much and uh, be well, everybody.